good afternoon all i am audible to am i audible to you okay that's great uh, now as i told you that we need to complete the topic uh, that is remaining in the theory session that was regarding to link state so we will complete link state and then we will go for the um in uh, go go to today's experiment right so So what we were discussing that was the fourth step that uh, uh, how to send link state packets that are created by each and every router uh, to all other routers. Okay, so uh, for that we as we don't have any other routing method currently, so of course what we will do we will use flooding. So whatever we have created that every router has created its own link state packet and that link state packet will send to all. Uh, all its neighbors and those neighbors will again for forward it further to all other interfaces except the one from which it arrived. Okay, so now whenever it is a flooding, then we need to dam the flood. That was our last discussion. For damming the flood, we will need um, we will need two mechanisms. One is the sequence number, and another is the age. What the sequence number? The sequence number is that whatever the number it is stored as a sequence number in the routing table of the router, it, is, it means that from that source A, suppose it, from that source, that sequence number is already seen. So again, if from any other interface uh, from the same source, if that sequence number mm -hmm. comes, then we should not entertain it. And if uh, the sequence number is less than whatever we have stored, then, uh, then also we should not enter in the packet. That means that the older, this is the previous older information. Newer information is already forwarded further. Okay, but if sequence number from the same source with the higher number comes, then we should update the sequence number with that higher number. So what should my routing table should have, or my not routing table, but some table that I need to maintain in that what I should have that source and its sequence number that I have seen. Suppose this is the routing table for B. So mm -hmm. it is that I have seen from A, I have seen sequence numbers the 32. Now if 31 or 0 to 31 comes, I'm going to discard it. 32 will also be discarded, but 33 onwards you get entertained if it is from the same source. Okay, one more field that we are having here is the age. What is age? Age is is actually stored in the packet link state packet, which will limit the the lifetime of the link state packet. Right? But now the some problems are associated with the sequence number. One of them we have discussed already. What was that? That sequence number length. 32 will require 5 bit length, but if it is um, uh, so how many length, how long we should have a sequence number so that wrap around there doesn't occur. So we concluded that of course uh, uh, at some certain instant that is going to take place, but if it is sufficiently long, then uh, wrap around will take time and other packets will get uh, when it so that initial number when it will come, then already those packets will be aged up, and hence those older packets will not get uh, affected by this um, by these numbers, right? So, so that is that's uh, what we have taken. That 32 bit is generally taken. 32 bit long uh, sequence number is generally taken. Again, uh, that depends. Uh, generally, 32 bit is sufficient. It is observed. Right? But again, that depends on protocol. The protocol some sequence number uh, should be maintained. That is what the case is. Okay. And then again, it is a standardization how long then it will be uh, mostly go to the protocol. But in your textbook, it says that 32 bit uh, will work. Okay. Now, next, if you will go with um, if you the next problem that is associated with this is uh, suppose my sequence number is a, uh, my sequence number is a four bit long four now for example I am taking four bit long sequence number so what I have stored here four bit that means it will be from zero to uh, fifteen numbers possible suppose I have seen that sequence number two that means I have stored zero zero one two that is what I have, so one zero. 
this is what I have stored. That means it's e sequence number two. So from the source A, if machine B receives any packet from three onwards, it will be accepted. Older packets, previous packets will be discarded. That is the meaning, right? Now A generates the third packet. So what will be the sequence number here? Three. That means it will have zero, zero, one, one. So ideally, whenever it will be flooded and whenever it will be received by B, B will note it down to 0011. Ideally, it should, receive, it should store it to 0011 and everything will work fine. But what if whenever it is getting transmitted here, okay, at that time, this, this gets corrupted. This bit gets corrupted. Any of this bit gets corrupted. This is corrupted means what zero is detected as one. So whenever it was generated, it was zero zero one one. But meanwhile, while it reached reach to B, right? It this bit gets corrupted and it becomes one zero one one. So now what B will see? The B will see it is eleventh packet and already what I have seen is two and now it is eleventh packet. So of course it will say okay, it is a newer one. So I should update it to one zero one one and it will store it like this and it will say okay now onwards if 12 onwards packet will come i'm going to keep them otherwise i'm going to discard them but that happened because my sequence number got corrupted okay now what will happen suppose it generates a further new packet and the next periodic update will generate a fourth packet now it doesn't get corrupted then it will get the same as 0100 what will be b's behavior will it accept or will it reject what will be b's behavior will it accept or will it reject it will reject it. Though it is a newer packet, though it is a newer one, but it will get rejected. Right? So this is a problem. Right? Now, how, how many packets will get rejected? From which number to which number will packets will get rejected? Until 11. True. Until the 12th packet will come, and the, until the 12th packet will come, uh, the packets will get rejected. And though they were newer information, what Ruta will be, we will think that it is older information, I don't need it. So that is the issue. Right? Now, here I told about just 4 bit, but what think about it if it is 32 bit and the most significant bit gets corrupted. So you can understand that all the updates are rejected by a router. Right, so this is a problem, and another problem that can take place is one of the first problem was wraparound issue, second issue is uh, this one, and also one of the possible issue is um, uh, the, the, the one that suppose the router crashes, suppose this router B crashes, then it will lose all the information that which packet it has seen so far. That is the third issue we have with this scheme, right. So some of the issues, like of course, root crashes, you will not be aware about that you have seen fourth packet or fifth packet. You will, you will, you will just not have any information about it. Okay. So uh, to solve some of this issue, we have the A field, uh, age field in the routing table itself. What is the meaning of age field of the, in the routing table? Age field in the link state packet is for the aging of link state packet, but. Uh, same aging is introduced in the in the table as well. Suppose my um, suppose my age generates a link state packet and its age field is the 60. What is the meaning of that? It should survive for 60 seconds, right? So at that time, uh, and suppose that it takes one second to travel from A to B. Okay. So now, uh, what 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 will happen at B? It B, uh, it is uh, of course in the link state packet of B, which will get forwarded further, it will be changed to what it will be changed to 59, right? So, of course, link state packet because it takes one second time, it is going to get reduced by one and it is going to make it 59. But B will forward it by making this age field as 59 in the link state packet. In that, no one should have any issue. I mean, I mean, no one will have any issue here because. Uh, that we have already discussed, right? But at the same time, the same value should be noted down in, in the routing table as well. What is the meaning of that? And now, this entry of the routing table, this entry the table should be, not routing table, but this entry in the link state uh, algorithm table uh, should be keep alive or keep active till 59 seconds. If 59, up in 59 seconds, uh, if no update comes, if no update comes, then this should be uh, uh, this should be rejected. This should be totally removed. Okay. Now, what is happening? How is this solving an issue?
how it is solving any issue here. Okay, now uh, what will happen? Uh, this uh, suppose this packet. Suppose so now what we have to generates a packet with sixty and mm -hmm. this, uh, this equals somebody three. So how the entry will be created? How the entry will be made in this table in the listed table? So A has sequence number three, right? And its uh, uh, routing uh, its uh, age entry will be fifty nine. Age entry is fifty nine. Okay. So this is for the sequence number three. Now, uh, now, what is the meaning of a uh, age entry in this table? This this entry this row in the table should be active or should be uh, sh should be valid till fifty nine seconds, right? Now, uh, in, in the next second, suppose uh, in the next periodic update, uh, a generates a packet with sequence number four, right? And of course, it will it will generate the age sixty because it is a new packet generated by A after periodic update. So, what will be the age of new sequence number? It will be also sixty because it is generated by A, and sequence number will be four, right? Now, how so? Now that for that new packet, new link state packet will come here. New link state packet will come to B, and it will get updated. Okay, uh, uh, forty. The sequence number is four, and because it takes one second, so it should be alive for fifty-nine. Now, what will happen? That this entry will vanish. When when this will will this will be removed? When you will not receive uh, the packet <coughs> having number more than four, uh, for uh, more, number having more than four for fifty-nine seconds. If you are not receiving at that time, this entry will be removed. Now suppose the case when 32-bit long sequence number gets corrupted. At that time, what will happen? So you know that uh, if you were, if you remember for the 4-bit, we took that from uh, 3 to uh, from 3 onwards, 3 to 12 packets were rejected. 3 to 11 packets were rejected. So you can understand that when 32 bits are there, for the longer time you are rejecting a packet, so you are not accepting a packet. That means in that case, what will happen? You are not receiving. A packet whose sequence number is greater than the one that you have that you have stored here, and of course this time we get uh, uh, this will this will hit this time will get hit, and hence what will happen? This entry will be removed. This time will be smaller than the time that will take to come to the sequence number that is stored in the number. Possibly it can is it is possible that this time will be smaller, right? And hence what will happen? This entry will be removed. Suppose meanwhile, suppose in that duration you are reaching, you have reached to sequence number say ten or the sequence number say eight. So from that eight number, this ent new entry with the sequence eight will be created, and so that uh, now eight, nine, ten, at least up to eight to eleven entries will be stored in your sequence number. Uh, eight to eleven will be eight to eleven sequence number will be stored. Uh, that will be entertained. That will be uh, that will be uh, uh, that information at least is taken from the root. Okay, so what was the issue? That we were rejecting all the packets for the longer time. We were rejecting you know, from our number whatever is uh, for whatever is actually generated that was three, and whatever is stored is eleven. We were store we were rejecting all the numbers from three to eleven. But what we did now, we limited the uh, limited the, and we were not updating till time. Till time the twelve comes, we were not updating this one, right? But instead, we did limit the entry lifetime of this entry one. So now what will happen? That this entry will vanish in in meanwhile. Meanwhile, uh, when you are, of course, you will lose some information here. From say, so it is possible that you, when you are reaching eight, up to that, this entry is there. So definitely, entry with four is there is there because the lifetime of the entry is still there. So of course, there will be you are losing some information from three to eight, but at least you are saving the information from eight to eleven. So that is how the eight field is going to work. Is it making sense to you, or should I take proper another example to explain it? Is it making sense how this age is going to help you? Uh, is it making sense? Yes or no? Okay. 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 Let me tell you. Uh, let me take uh, the example in a proper way. Wait. Are you clear with that? Uh, we are making uh, age of. Uh, Record in our table. We are we are writing uh, the age of the entry in the table. Okay. Okay. Fine. Let me tell you. 
Okay, let us take a proper example here itself. Okay. I am taking node A. Okay, node A takes one second to reach node B. Okay. One second or one whatever the way you consider, right? This is C. Okay. Now uh, we I B maintains a table. B maintains a table in that it stores that uh, the source is A, the sequence number it visits, and the age field that it visits. The age field of uh, age field of uh, uh, this entry, this this record, the table. Okay, or the same value will be of link state packets age even. Okay, now A generates a packet. Okay, so A generates the third link state packet. So what will be the sequence number? A generates the third sequence, uh, third um, link state packet. What will be the sequence number? Sequence number say is three. Okay, it is this third uh, third link state packet. So I'm assuming that sequence number will be say three. What is the age age field of this link state packet? Let us take on your own whatever value you want to take. Age field of the link state packet. Take any value of your choice. Should I take sixty? Will it be fine if I'm taking again the same value sixty? Okay. A, what is the significance of the sixty? What is the meaning of the sixty? Sixty hopes it can survive. Right now, I am taking this age in terms of seconds, so it will survive for the sixty seconds. Right? Once and twice, both are same, so you can take it as sixty seconds. For now, in uh, we are taking this as the time, so sixty seconds it will survive. Okay. Now, uh, what we are having here is uh, what with the content in the uh, link state packet is neighbor. So, how, what are the is neighbor B and C? How to reach the cost of that? Some that will be the content. Up to this, you are clear with. This is a link state packet sequence number three generated by A. Up to this, everyone is clear. Up to this, in doubt. Okay. So now, now it is received by B. What will be the end? This is my B's tables. This is B's link state table. It is able to maintain uh, the records or record of that how many link state packets it has forwarded, flooded. This is the table maintained by B for the link state packets. Is it clear? Fine. So now, what will be the entry in this uh, in, in this table B for this link state packet? So, it, what is the source? Source is A. What is the sequence number? What will be the sequence number entry? Three. True. What will be the age? What is the age? What will be the age value here? It will be sixty minus one fifty nine. Yes, it will be sixty minus one fifty nine. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of this? So now B will flood it further to its other neighbors. B will flood flood it uh, that uh, link state packet to its neighbor. So in that, who will be the source? No, this packet is flooded by B. The same packet is flooded by B, right? B floods the packet that comes from A. So, what is the flooding technology or the technique that uh, it will flood from uh, to all other interfaces except the one from which it arrived? It arrived from this, so it is going to flood it, forward it to this and this direction. Will it change the source? Will it change the source? Can it change the source? No, it cannot change the source. So will be the source? Okay, okay. Source will be A. What will be the sequence number? What will be the sequence number? Three. Sequence number will be three. What will be the uh, uh, age field? Fifty-eight. Shall I, will it be fifty-eight? Fifty-nine. 
by uh, by it will be fifty nine because it takes us two second, right? So it will be sixty minus one, so it will be fifty nine. So how much time or how many hoops? Fifty nine hoops it can for for the survive or fifty nine seconds it can for the survive. What will be the content? Information about whom? What will be the content? Neighbors. Whose neighbors? No. This is not a blank state packet generated by B. See, this is of course whenever B will generate its own packet, no, at that time it will have its own neighbors. Are you getting what I am talking about? Is that A uh, the A's packet is arrived here? It is for flow flooding further. It is not like blank state. It is not source is B. It source is not B. Source is yet A. What is the meaning? Whatever packet arrived here, it will get flooded by this two. See. Whenever the link state packet is generated by A, it will be flooded by this on this link and this link. It will uh, the link state packet generated by this will be will arrive here and it will be flooded by this too. The same packet will uh, uh, same packet will arrive at C. Same packet means what? Information about A, the information generated by A about its own neighbor B and E will come to this node by. Different interfaces, and it will be forwarded to the next one. Whichever will come here, that will be forwarded over this side and this side. And whichever will come from this side, that will be forwarded over this and this. It will be forwarded to all other interfaces except the one from which it arrived. So what? See, link state packet everyone will generate, but everyone will flood it to all other ones. Are you getting the case? Same way, we will generate its own link state packet that will also be flooded to all. So uh, the flooding is going on. uh for for all the nodes about all all information is it making sense to you okay fine so now um okay so now what we are doing here is okay so now it is 59 okay uh, so um Okay, so uh, so, where we, okay, so now it is fifty nine. So that uh, so uh, okay. So what will be the information here? There we were. What will be the information here? In this in this link state, whenever it is packet of A is flooded by B, what is the information here? Only C. Is it information about only C neighbors of A? Who are the neighbors of A? b and c so yes information will be about b and c what it means that how a can reach to b and c so that information that came from a b is flooded further is it making sense now okay now uh, oh, fine now what will happen so this is the meaning right now uh, what will happen suppose uh, now next packet is generated by a so now it, it is equal to number 4 okay that sequence number is 4 so now uh, 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 next packet is generated up uh, uh, in the next periodic update periodic update comes after uh, say after some time some periodic update is created right so till time what will happen that suppose periodic update is created after 3 second it means once i have generated sequence number 3 after 3 second i am going to generate the next update and what is update in my neighbors okay so uh so, so after this so at that time what will happen suppose i am generating the update after 3 second so uh, uh, three time every clock is having the same uh, every clock will have uh, uh, three second left now if they, they have the three second as elapsed in every clock so now what will be the age enter here what will be the age value here currently what is the age value uh, uh, 3 second has gone so uh, this entry should be active for 15 second but now 3 second has already gone so this entry should be active for how many seconds now 56 true this entry should be active for 56 seconds now what happens after 3 second this new packet is generated now what is the sequence number 4 now the sequence number is 4 And that entry, which is, uh, that entry with age value sixty, is created. That will be arrived at B. So now, how this will be treated? How 
how this will be uh, changed to now new sequence number value four each into six is created 60 is created so now it will come to be after how many seconds one second so what will be the new sequence number here new entry is generated right so what will be new update is arrived to 8b so how what, what we will do will it accept or reject will be accept or reject accept what will be the new sequence number now four what will be the age entry now 59 what is the meaning of this 59 true it is 59 what is the meaning of this this update is active or valid for 59 seconds that is the meaning kind of uh, uh, the meaning you can derive from that you should keep this update of which was received by sequence number four for the 59 seconds it is validity of this uh, this record is it clear now how it is uh, how it is solving the previous issue what was the issue suppose my sequence ideally i was expecting three but instead i have uh, uh, i was expecting third sequence number right but i am receiving because of error i am receiving that sequence number error is uh, the sequence number was having issue that's why i am receiving 11 right if you remember that we did so one because of msb error, i was having sequence number 11 at that time what would i have that i would have stored that that okay sequence number 11 and the age entry is 59 right so that is how i would have stored that but now the new update generated by a will be four right which will be rejected but this time will because it is not recorded here this time will be uh, will be going on after 59 seconds if no new update is received then this entry will vanish so possibly at that time what where we have reached so uh, where we have reached it is possible that uh, that we have reached up to say a, we have reached up to eight sequence number a has generated a sequence number but this entry is now older uh, that entry uh, the time has been uh, over and hence this entry is removed so now this eight sequence number will be generated by a will be accepted by b because this entry is not now no longer existing so it will think okay it is a new entry so a sequence number eight and 59 should be uh, should be the time because it will only be one second time for eight sequence number as well so now what we have lost from three to eight what we have saved from eight to eleven is it clear now or should i take last motion again with the example last question is clear to you yes or no i can take uh, okay okay so last question uh, taking a thing but actually we should go with the okay, file let us complete it quickly um okay so um so now okay now think think that b b has okay now whose entry of that is generated here right and uh, uh, age we are taking smaller age so that we can be even with more clear with that suppose i'm taking age of 12 what is the meaning of this priyanka explain this what is the meaning of this what is the significance of this age 12 that means what Twelve second remaining of four what 12 seconds remaining for what uh, what valid uh, what valid, valid for sequence number two Okay, so whatever update we have received, otherwise after 12 seconds, what will happen? This entry will be, this entry will vanish. Okay, now, uh, okay, now what will happen now? A generates sequence number three. Okay, but it gets corrupted in the way by some X, Y, Z reason. It gets corrupted in the way. Okay, so now what we are doing here? The sequence number will be three. Okay, it gets corrupted. 
uh, uh, sequence number three is there. Ideally, it should be sequence number three and assume that age is every time 12, right? So uh, what ideally should happen that uh, uh, sequence number three and age should be, uh, this actually uh, generates the packet with say 13 age. A generates a packet with 13 age instead of 60, right? And uh, uh, one second has elapsed, so it will it ideally it should have the entry with three and twelve. Up to this, everyone uh, is clear that A has generate A generates the packet with age thirteen. Okay, sequence number three is generated. So ideal, what should happen? Because it takes one second. So what we should enter that A with sequence number three and age twelve. Everyone is comfortable up to this. If you are not clear with the initial portion, then uh, you will not be able to get the next one. Are you clear up to this? Yes or no? Answer can be no, but it has to be something. Yes or no? Okay. Now what we are doing here is... Um, okay, but suppose this gets corrupted in the way. So instead of three, ideally, if one bit first, uh, most significant bit gets corrupted. So instead of 0011, you are receiving a sequence number as 1011. So your sequence number bit gets corrupted. So what will be the entry of B? What will be the entry of B? See, we have to take laboratory as well. So quick, be quick here. I, I don't have I, uh, that much time right here. I was expecting 10 to 15 minutes only for this topic. But uh, so be quick now. Uh, suppose this sequence number uh, here, sequence number 3, the first bit gets corrupted. So sequence number 11 and age will be what? What will be the age? What will be the age? Yes, it will be 12 only because uh, the time take age is, is 13 and one second is known to us, so it will be 12 only. Right? So this is how the entry is maintained. Okay. Now after three seconds, after three seconds, A generates a new packet. That is periodic update is generated by A after three seconds. What will be the new packet generated by A? What will be the sequence number? Be quick. What will be the sequence number? Four. What will be uh, the um, okay? What will be uh, the type uh, that uh, age we are taking thirteen seven? Age, for example, we are taking thirteen seven. It will be fixed every time it will be thirteen seven, right? So uh, okay, thirteen seconds. So now, what will happen in this? Uh, it doesn't get corrupted. It is just very uh, fine here. What will be B stand? What B will do? First of all, before it reaches at this time, what will be the current entry? What will be the value here of this age field? Currently, what is the table situation in this uh, in in this uh, area or in this table? What is the record value in this table? A eleven is it be twelve? Nine. Yes, it will be nine. Why it is nine? Because after three seconds, this is generated, right? So actually, it will be nine. Uh, and suppose it is 9, or if you want to be precise, this one second is already, already has been passed. So th after 3 seconds, it generates, and 1 second, it will take time to reach here. So it, it will be instead of 12, what it will be? Instead of 12, what it will be? 8. It will be 8. Okay. Will it get this? Will this packet get up, uh, accepted, and will this thing get updated? Will this entry get updated? Yes or no? Will this entry get updated? Sequence number is even stored here. Sequence number is 4. Will 4 be accepted if sequence number 11 is stored here? Yes or no? It will not get stored, yes. Why it is not stored? Because it feels that sequence number 4 is golden packet. I have seen sequence number 11. Up to which sequence number the packet will not get stored? How many sequence number will get rejected? From 4 to how many? From 4 to which sequence number will get rejected? 
4 to which packet will get rejected if I am not doing anything? 10 or 11? 11 is also rejected because I have already stored 11. I have already seen 11. So 4 to 11 is rejected. Yes or no? Okay. Now what is happening? Okay, after again 3 seconds, one more packet A generates, periodic updated generates. Right? So what will be the sequence number there? What will be the sequence of the next period? Yes, 5. What will be the age field? Be quick. What will be the age field? 30. Okay. Okay. How, uh, uh, when it will, whenever it will reach to B, what will be the age field here? What will be the age field here? Will it be 5? It will be 4. Yes, it will be 4. Why? Uh, because, because three seconds after three seconds it is generated one minute of propagation delay, so it will be four, right? Will this packet be accepted fifth packet? Will this packet be accepted? No. Okay. So now uh, it will, because now again A will generate a packet, right? Uh, a will generate a, a packet after three. What will be the sequence number? So three second periodic delay it will, it will generate a new packet. What will be uh, the one? Actually, uh, whatever the duration is, right? Assume otherwise. Uh, okay, fine. What will be the next one? Um, uh, next packet. Six and thirty. True. What will be the entry here? What will be the entry here? It will be zero. It will be zero. Suppose it becomes zero. Suppose when it becomes zero, then what will happen? Whenever it becomes zero, what will happen? It will be removed. Okay, it will be removed. And at that time, you are receiving this packet. So what will be this time? At that time, assume that this is removed, and you have received this packet now. So what will be the set? Uh, what will be B stand? It doesn't have any entry. So what it will be? It will consider, okay, it is a new entry. And what will be its new entry then? Suppose this record doesn't exist. And now B will react. It will make a new entry, right? It will make a new entry. So what will be that entry? Can you tell me? What will be the sequence number 6 and 12? Yes, exactly. So how many packets we have missed here? only 4 and 5. Assuming that it was generated periodically at 4 seconds. Um, if it is generating at 4 seconds, uh, assuming that, okay, it was generated after uh, whatever, for this example, are you clear with that? That uh, uh, instead of missing all the packets from 4 to 11, we have missed few packets only. That is what my point was. We have four and fifth, six packet was accepted. If not, the seventh packet will get accepted. Whatever the number is, the point is that we will not miss all eleven packets. Is that clear to you? Understood. So this is how that age field in the record um, will help us. Whatever, see, we were not precise here because at every three second if the packet is generated, then one second will also uh, in, uh, it will reach uh, uh, after every three seconds, right? So, okay, but uh, whatever the, not, not every four seconds, it will be set every three seconds here. Anyway, whatever the one is, you, in case it is, uh, we are going to the precise calculation, we will, uh, we will discuss the seventh one. We will meet them the sixth one, fifth one, fourth one. But anyway, the case is that we will not miss all things. Right? So, are you clear with the point? What I want to say here, that age in the record will help in removing the older entries. Okay. And uh, what is the next step that we are doing here is, um, uh, so, so this is all about sequence number and age field. Uh, and after, uh, so now this is how you will forward your insert packets to others. Okay. Now, uh, the fifth step is, once you are receiving all the listed packets, then what you have information, be, suppose here, uh, all the listed packets are flooded. So what B has received? Which packets B has received? Will it receive the packet from A? Yes, so will A will B receive packet from A? Uh, will B will receive packet from A? So 
once all the packets are flooded the he has received packet from a uh, 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 so no what is the flooding process that every everyone will send a uh, information about its neighbor to every every other group so now once the flooding is over what every node knows say i'm going to conduct a laboratory for half an hour more right if you will do like that because i need some time for the laboratory it should not happen be quick here yes has to reach all other nodes can it construct the graph like this from uh, from what information it has b knows that who are the neighbors of f b knows that who are the neighbors of c b knows that who are the neighbors of all other routers so can it create this type of graph from whatever it has received already from all the linked packets can it create this type of graph graph yes and once you have this graph can you create how to reach to all uh, all the routers in the shortest path all the machines to the shortest with the shortest path must you know this type of graph of your entire network can you find out shortest path to reach every machine can you find shortest path to reach every machine which will algorithm are you going to use which algorithm that you know dextra right so that is what your first step is once you know um uh, once you know that, uh, uh, that uh, how to reach every other machine can you if you can construct this graph and then after you are going to create the the dextra uh, you are going to use the dextra algorithm for computing the shortest path to every other router and that is what the first step is so this is all about link state routing any doubt up to this any doubt in all this first steps for this link state routing okay so uh, more discussion on next routing tables routing algorithms will be conducted in the next lecture but uh, right now let us move to our laboratory part okay so okay so now today uh, in our laboratory we need to go for the need to go for check sum okay i want to have some error um, error detection or detection mechanism i want to have some error detection mechanism using checksum okay so i have a transmitter i have received right transmitter sends a frame right and it uh, sends some checksum okay receiver receives um, okay receiver receives the frame right and uh, in that frame it also receives some checksum of course because it is transmitted and created by transmitter right it is it, it is receiving the checksum there okay so now uh, we want to implement this mechanism of checksum that uh, uh, using the checksum we will be able to identify the errors so now think how we are going to create the frame uh, what will be the Uh, what is outline? How we are going to create the frame? How we are going to compute the checksum? How we are going to uh, verify the checksum and all those things? So make a plan and let me know about that. Are you clear with what to do? Checksum mechanism. What is checksum? Can anyone tell me what is checksum? Use for error control, but that is not the answer. Well, what is checksum? Yes, sum of all the bits in IP header, not necessarily IP header. It can be sum of all all the bits. Um, is it sum of all the bits? It is sum of something. But is it all the bits? Is it necessary to be in an IP header? 
yes it is of data okay so that is okay how it will be helpful in checking whether it is correct or not Mm, if we get all ones, it is correct. Uh, then we'll explain it. Check the sender and receiver side and compare them. Okay, so this can happen. Okay, so uh, Priyank's answer is uh, to, to some extent it is correct. Okay, but it is not actually we can implement like that. But uh, this is not the concept of checksum. Try to recall what was checksum. Suppose I have a frame, right? So I want to find out checksum of the frame. So first of all, what I need to do. Well, first of all, if you remember the uh, first, of, if you remember the IP header, it was a bit string. Then we need to find out the sum of that bit string. How we were finding it? For, uh, we we chopped it off, right? We chopped it off. What was the size of that uh, um, that chopping off? How how like how long we kept the size of the word that you summed up? The, what was the size of your data? Convert into hexa, not necessarily. See, this is for our understanding only. Convert all to hexa is not necessary. How many bits we took? For the simplicity, we were taking in hexa, right? What is the concept? I am asking about the concept here. So I have a bit stream. Say, okay, let me explain you like this. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, like this. This is a bit stream. I want to find the text from here. How to find? This is a bit stream. Step by step and be quick. CRC is okay. I think that was completed last time. It was done last time. I'm asking about another mechanism of checksum. Right? So tell me about one. Uh, sub, okay. First of all, uh, divide into uh, M bits part and some all the parts. Exactly correct, Aman, here. Yes. Uh, yes. Social is also correct here that he, he chopped, chopped it off to some bits and then uh, they, the bits are added and then uh, the, all the parts are summed up. So exactly correct. Both of them are correct here. So, what, so now suppose I'm deciding that I want to find out checksum of a frame. I have to decide that uh, I, what will be the um the size of my uh, how how long what is the size of the word that it will be 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit whatever and then i have to sum them all then what to do after summation i will get a summation then what to do with that one that is at the last side i will drop my drop off my words right drop off my bit stream and then i will sum them up then what is the next thing the question says negative sign what is negative sign will it be just a negative sign we will find out uh, negative complement of the same, right? We will find out the complement of the same. Then, then we will transmit it, right? We will transmit it. At the receiver side, what will happen? In the receiver program, what will happen? Will it? Will we receive checksum? Will we receive complement of the checksum? Yes or no? Yes. Then how is it is helpful to us? How will we detect whether it is error or not? Sum both data and check some, then what will be the result? What will be the result? Zero, then no error. And if it is not zero, then there is an error. Everyone is comfortable with the concept of this check some? Is everyone comfortable? Okay, now what is my question to you? How will we implement here? How will we, uh, what are the specifications? We need to have specification, right? We need to have specifications, like what will be the word size, 
whether we will see here we adopt priyank's method even instead of sending negative sign compliment we will send the text itself right and then we again compute uh, compute the checksum on the receiver side and compare whether the received checksum and computed checksum is same or not then also it is fine right is it clear to you you can have uh, you can have complement of your uh, checksum you can have complement of your checksum or uh, complement of the checksum or you can check send checksum itself and then without checksum just take your bit streams bit uh, bit values and find checksum and receive it again and compare whether the computed checksum is same as the received checksum or not is it making sense okay so now uh, let us refine it whatever the method you want to use i don't mind how will you sum up what will be the frame length what will be your word size Design that in two, three minutes, five minutes will take for that, and tell me how we will implement this. Then we will have a common method to implement, and then we will start implementation of this. Is it clear? Are you clear with the question? Yes or no? Okay, fine. So take five minutes, think over this, and then come back. Take five minutes. Uh, I I I will bring you at four twenty six. Before that, if you are ready, that definitely we can discuss.
Okay, so what is the scheme that you have decided? First of all, uh, what will be the data type of your string? Data type of your frame? It will be string. Right? It will be a string that you can keep. Uh, right? Let's keep it. Let's keep it string. What will be the length of your uh, lit, uh, frame? How many uh, letters? How many characters are going to keep in your frame? How many characters you want to keep in your frame? Any number, multiple eight. Let us keep it eight. Let us keep it eight. Okay. Okay. So eight characters long of string will be there. It will be your frame. So suppose my information is say um Suppose this is my frame. Okay. So this is five plus three letters. This is my frame. Okay. Now, how will you compute the checksum? What is your idea to compute the checksum? For this stream, what will be how you are going to chop it off? How many bits uh, you are going to keep as, as your word? H indicates how many bit? H indicates how many bits? Eight bit. ASCII value of H will be eight bit long, right? So it will be eight bits, right? So here we have taken uh, frame size is sixty four bits. It is eight characters each of eight bits. Is it making sense now? Are you clear with that? 64 bit long frame we have taken currently how we are going to chop it off thirty two that means you want to take summation of uh, 32 bits. So, four characters submission you want to take. Is that the case? Dev? Uh, so, you want to keep it as 32 plus 32. Okay. Uh, fine. We keep that. Uh, but here, <coughs> certainly, see here only two uh, summations, two uh, because we have taken 64 bit long. Just uh, there will be just partition of two only. Right? Uh, fine, you can keep that. Uh, that one, no issues. But uh, what will be the summation of thirty-two uh, number to thirty-two bit number? How long it will be? Summation of thirty-two thirty-two bit number will be thirty-two bit. Uh, let us keep it as thirty-two right now. Uh, you can keep it thirty-three as well. But you can keep thirty-three as well. Thirty-two, that is your choice. I don't mind. But try to make it uh, simple because you need to implement dates, right? So uh, fine, it can be 33, so you want to go for regular submission? You want to go with regular submission of ASCII values? OK, so you need to keep 33 bit. How we are going to maintain that 33 bit? So how what will be the length of frame that you will transmit? How many characters you need to reserve in your frame for 33? How many characters you need to you need here? 33 bits. That means you can send string only, no? You need either you can send either character or string. So to send 33 bit, how many characters you will need to send? 33 characters? 33 bits, na? How many characters you need? 5 characters? Okay, so what will be your frame length? What will be your frame length? 30. Is it preferable? 
I mean, eight bits of character and five bits of checksum. Five characters of checksum. Is it efficient? More than fifty percent overhead. All of you are comfortable that thirteen bit will be the total frame length. So, is it efficient solution? Should you have your fifty percent extra? You could have sent half another frame, yes or no? In this overhead, would you prefer this? Yes or no? It can be yes. Answer can be yes, but it has to be something, right? Not necessary to fall, uh, get convinced or get agreed with me, but you have to have some strength. Are you getting the point? I eight bits of my data, right? And I'm using five characters for the checksum. Will it is it sufficient? Is it preferable? Should we keep like that? No, na. So where the where the problem lies? Where is the the problem here? Length of what? Check some length of no string is eight. See, you cannot increase the string length because your check some is larger. User, the problem is not in the string. That is what user wants to send, or that is what the, the your system permits. Check some is extra. You cannot change for accommodating this check some. You cannot increase your system capacity. I'm repeating. Check the string length. We already decided that frame length will be eight characters. That we already earlier decided. Now because of text, we will not edit it. Problem is where in the length of text, sir. Right. So should we we should be chop it to the smaller one. Right. So what is the size that you want to prefer? Eight bit, you can go with eight bit. So if it is, if so, if it is eight bit, that means what exactly are adding? One character, every character is added. That means every ASCII value is added to the next ASCII value. Can I say so? Okay. So what will be the summation? What will be the length of summation? Sorry, what will be the length of the summation? Will it be one character? Multiple eight bit values is simply added up. Multiple eight bit values are added up. Result will be eight bit only. How many bits? Yes, with carry. So, what, what do, you, do you want to accommodate that carry or not? If you will accommodate, yes, it is nine bits, right? If it is nine bit, then how many characters will be there? For nine bit, two characters. Just for one bit, we are unnecessarily wasting one character. Can I say so? Can you find out some other solution? I mean, not other solution, but refinement of this. Of solution of this problem, add carry into some that can happen. Adding carry into some whatever mechanism you are doing here, the same mechanism you have to do in the on the receiver side, right? You have to do on the receiver side, and then uh, yes, another option is this: you just ignore the carry. It's also possible. You can ignore the carry, and on the receiver side, do the same and verify whether the answer is true or not. Is it okay? So now, what do you want? To, or you can go with the XOR. What is XOR? Will XOR help here? What will be the XOR of eight bit multiple eight bit values? It will be eight bit only. 
right so out of these three solutions or multiple other solutions which are you going to keep are you going to keep nine bits then i also don't have a problem but uh, whether you decide whether the system is efficient or not second is that uh, you want to keep uh, um, this uh, um, 8 bit uh, with, with adding the carry into the value or you want to ignore the carry or you want to keep xor what are the options multiple options we have discussed decide the one and let me know but everyone will follow the same let me know the one which one you find suitable and of course because multiple answers are required here then only we will go with that particular method so all of you write uh, what you are going to prefer then we will see the majority one and then we will follow what is 8 bit what is 8 bit xor if you write 8, 8 bit should assume that it is xor one 8 bit you are going to keep okay for 8 bit understood, understood for 8 bit which option you are going to use that uh, you are going to add the carry to itself or you are going to ignore the carry or you are using xor Shell, Dev, Priyank says uh, XOR. What about others? You can go with any other method, but let us see what majority says. All of you have to reply. Reply here. Okay, three for XOR. What about others? Rona, Kenil, Ansh, Pranav. What about you? What, are, what is your stand here? Okay, Lau says it is XOR. What about others? Okay. Okay, so so let us uh, conclude here. So let us control. I think all of you want to go with the XOR one. So fine, let us keep it to XOR. So now what we will do, we will take data from user. We will find out checksum by exploring individual characters with the, each other, and we will have a checksum. We will send it to the sender side. So now, um, right? So that is how the checksum is created. What about uh, refinement? How we will validate the checksum on the receiver side? Should we go for the validation later on? Should you do, would you like to first compute the checksum? So would you like to compute the checksum first? Then we should go for the validation part. Okay, that's that's okay. That I, I also feel the same that you should go with the uh, computation of checksum first. So all of you start doing that. But wait, wait, one more point I forgot to discuss for the link state just a second. Let me complete that portion and then you can continue with the one point uh, we could not discuss at that time. Uh, just a second. Uh, and let me complete the topic first. See, um, in the link state, uh, uh, in the link state packet, uh, some refinements of the algorithm is also proposed. What is that? That uh, what happens that B receives every machine receives link state update from all other packets, right? Suppose C receives um, update from A, right? So update uh, from A is actually received by B. So B will forward it further here. Okay. Same way A's update is received by E, it will forward it further here. So can I say the same sequence number that was remitted by A will be received by C by two interfaces? Yes or no? Now what C will do? C whatever is received from this side, it will forward it on this and this side. Whatever is received from this side, it will forward it over this and this side. So actually, the same packet was received from two sides. Actually, ideally, it should be forwarded on this side only, but instead it was forwarded on all the direction. So to stop this process also, there was one refinement uh, that was proposed. What was that? Once, as soon as you are receiving your packet, do not forward it. Like C is receiving packet from A via B here on this line due to flooding. It will not forward it to this two lines immediately, but instead it will wait for some time. Meanwhile, uh, this packet from A might have been <coughs> uh, might have been received uh, uh, by uh, via E as well. So now what C knows 
he knows that that uh, the same packet because the same signal somewhere the same source is there it means it is the same packet which i received from two interface because of flooding so i should not forward this packet to on this side only this packet should be forwarded here because the same packet is already received by two other interfaces so how this what what it do it will simply uh, forward it on this interface and it will acknowledge b and e that i have forwarded the packet Right. So that is two things that we have in, um, in the new algorithm is introduced. What is that? Uh, as soon as you receive link state packet, link state update, do not forward it to all other interfaces. Wait, you might receive this from other interfaces also. And then uh, if any interface is remaining after that, then you just forward to that interface. Do not forward to the interface already, which has already uh, has that information. Plus, another thing is that acknowledgement is, should be given. Right to whom to the interfaces from which that the packet is received, so that is the reliability purpose. Okay, so that is what this table is saying. Like this type of table is created. What is it? Just send flags and acknowledgement flags. So, so the, this is the table of B. What it says: source is A. B has received from A. Certain sequence number and certain age that we have already discussed. So when it comes from A, it should not be sent to A again, but it should be sent to C and F. So send flag of C and F should be one, and send flag of A should be zero. Okay. And what should be acknowledgement? Who should it should acknowledge? Because it has received from A, it should acknowledge to A, but it should not acknowledge to C and F. So it should not acknowledge to C and F, but it should acknowledge to A. But now, suppose it is E. Suppose it, let us we are taking the case of C. What is the case of C? What suppose C receives it from B and E both the interfaces? Then it should have, um, okay, no, not like that. Suppose it is a packet from, from not C. It is it is it is a table of B only. So packet from C has been received by B and from the interface C and from the interface F. Because of waiting, it is waiting for some. In that duration, B has received the same packet generated by C, the same sequence number from the interface from C as well as from the interface of F. Okay. So if it is received, so uh, so that packet, so uh, so source is C and it will be received by. Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, it has been. Um, so what is this? Uh, uh, wait, it is the okay, source is C. So if it is a source is C, okay. So now what will be the entries here? Suppose C's packet has been received by uh, uh, both these interfaces. So whom it should forward the packet to? What will what should be the send flag of it? Uh, whose send flag should be one A C or F? Whose send flag should be one? Whose send flag should be one A C or F? Send flag is one. This means what? That packet should be forwarded to, should be sent to whom? If C's packet is received from this interface as well as from this interface, then should it forward it? That packet should be forwarded to which interface only? A, C, or F? A, C, or F? Are you not clear with this? Are right. Let me take the example. You are very slow in this case. Are you clear with that? We are going to uh, the refinement of the algorithm is that we should wait for some time uh, so that it will be uh, if any other packet. Okay, let me take from the flooding part itself. You are very slow in this. Let me tell you. Okay, it generates an update. Right, I'm taking another example from the beginning. Okay, but be quick here. As whatever is clear, you just answer me quickly. A generates a packet. Okay, that packet will be generated by A, will be forwarded to both its interface. So, this is flooded. Are you clear with that? Now, what will be what B will do? B will forward to whom? B will forward packet by A to whom? C and F. So this packet is forwarded. So sequence number is a five. Same sequence number is forwarded to C and F. Okay. Who? What E will do? 
whom it will forward it to. The packet generated by A with sequence number 5 containing the information about A's neighbor will be received by E. It will be forwarded to C and F again. Yes, true. It will be forwarded to C and F again. Right? Now, what C stand will be? C has received packet from A from interface. This interface. It has received it. This packet from this interface has received. What C will do? What C will do that packet? What it should do is not the question. What it will do is the question. According to the algorithm, what it will do? It will forward it to E and D. Clear? Yes. Okay. Now, it has already received a packet, the same packet it has received from this interface also. What it will do here? From whatever it has received from this, what C will do for that? This packet, the same packet A, it is also received from this interface. To whom it will forward? If whatever the packet is received, this packet is received, right? So what C will do for this received packet? B and D. True. Yeah. Are you get it will forward it to B and D. Do we need to do this process? Because already whatever packet it has received, but the same packet was received from the other the interface, that's why it was sent again. This is unnecessary process, no? Right? So how to solve this issue? Why that happen? Because C received the same packet from the B, C received the same packet from the E, right? But it whenever as soon as it arrived, it forwarded on this line and this line. As soon as this arrived, it forwarded on this line and this line. That's why the problem occurred. It was knowing that it is the same source and same sequence number. It was not difficult to identify that I have forwarded the same packet to all the lines. Are you clear with the problem? Okay, what is the solution? What is the solution? Okay, what I what C should do? Once it receives for packet from B about A, should it forward it immediately? If it is waiting for a while, it is possible that meanwhile it will receive the same packet from this side. So what it will come to know? To whom it should forward it? As soon as it receives from B, should it forward it? No. It should wait for some time, then it will receive it from the E as well. So it will know that it should forward it to D only. So this is the refinement. Are you clear with what is the refinement? Great. Now for that, what it means is? Send in acknowledgement flags. So now let us so let us take only B. B is stable. So what it is having send either it can send the packet or it can acknowledge one, right? So B can uh, C will get packet from B and E and same time, not necessarily exactly at the same time, but uh, it depends on that how much E is loaded, what is the length of the path and uh, uh, or many other things, right? So not exactly one, but in nearby time, in the nearby time, in few microsecond, nanosecond difference it may get, right? Because number of hopes are same, ne? but not exactly one because here E might be loaded more. This length is more than the length that uh, A has to travel, A packet has to travel through B. So I think it matters slightly. The difference will be there. It will not be the same, of course. Otherwise, we do not have to wait anyway. Immediately we will come to know. Understood? Okay. Now, um, okay. So now we are. What we are going to now? Let us take B stable. So B will maintain send flag of for this neighbor and acknowledgement flag for its neighbor. Either it will send the packet to uh, neighbors or it will acknowledge the packets to from its neighbor. Send flex and acknowledgement. Okay. Now, whatever packet will come from A. So what it will do, suppose a packet A is the source is, so what it is going to maintain, what is the source? The source is A. What is the sequence number? So whatever the sequence number is, 5. 
what is the age up to this we have discussed na we have discussed up to this what is the age will be say age is 59 up to this it that it is it is uh, up to that this we have discussed up to this anyone is having doubt that we will have this entry in bis table if age hundreds a packet if age hundreds a packet that is received by b then this will be um the entry up to this anyone has doubt yes or no okay now we have one more field of send flag so whom this packet should be sent that is received by a interface a it is received to whom it should be forwarded to whom it should be sent you told me earlier to whom it should be sent to which interface it should be forwarded should it be forwarded to a again no so zero it should not be sent to a should it be sent to c and f currently should it be sent to c and f as of now what i know about it yes or no right so send flag is 1 and 1 to whom i should acknowledge that i have forwarded it for the a so i should acknowledge a should i acknowledge to c and f No, so I will make it zero. Is it clear? Okay. Now assume that uh, E is the source. So now what? Who is the source? E is the source. So X is the sequence number. X is the age. Right now we are not interested in that part, right? Okay. That E packet is flooded. First of all, who will be the immediate receiver? E is generating its link state packet. This link state packet. E has generated. Who will be the immediate receivers? Suppose that E has generated a packet. Who will like E generated? Now E has generated. Who will be the first first time receivers? Who will receive first? Only if E will flood it to its all interface. So who will receive it? Yes, it will be A C F. So A C and F has received, but this is B stable. Do not get confused. Okay, A has received update from E, F has received update from E, and C has received update from E. What will be the stand of A? What it will do with the update that it it has received by from E? What A will do? What A will do? To B only because it has already received from this side, so it will forward to B. So now B has received update from E. Yes or no? B has received update from E. So to whom, uh, to whom it will, uh, uh, to whom it will acknowledge, or, and to whom it will send it further? It has received from this. So to to whom it should send it further? It has received from this side. C and F, C and F, A should be zero. To whom it should acknowledge? To whom it should acknowledge? A, okay. But this we talked about this side only. But now we are using the refined algorithm. What is that? We will not do this task immediately. It will wait for some time. It will not send it to C and F immediately, right? It knows that I have to send it to C and F. But it will not do it immediately because it knows that possibly I will receive the same copy from other side as well. Now, which copy it received? Generated by E, but through which interface it will receive? What do you think? We have discussed about this copy of E, but two other copies are also there. Which copy of E B will receive now? What are the probabilities? F and C, both of them. F and C, both of them. But assume that it is it is waiting. Uh, suppose it is receiving uh, that the one that is from F side is taking time, or other from C side is taking time. Suppose this line is occupied, and uh, uh, or uh, occupied and busy, and hence this update will take time to reach here. Assume that. Okay, but this update reach earlier. Okay, 
so uh, suppose that this is busy line or something because of some reason this could not reach assume that but this reach are here so what what will be b stand now because it is a packet of e it has received from air f should it send it to f it is received from this it should be send it to f again no should you send it to e should you send it to a yes or no should you send it to a no right you should send it to whom only c only why because so far because of xyz reason it has not that copy that has not been received by c is not aware whether c has that information or not Right. Ideally, uh, if it is coming from this, it should not forward it to anyone. But right now, assuming that this has not received, so B will know that C is not aware about E's information. That's why it will forward it to that. So it will not send to F. Uh, it will not send to A, but it will send to C. Okay. What should be uh, the acknowledgement flag? Should it acknowledgement uh, send to acknowledgement to F? Should be sent to acknowledgement to F? Yes or no? Yes. So it should be like this one only. So uh, and then uh, uh, assuming that now before the timeout occurs and it sends to copy to C, that I believe C's copy is not arrived yet, and hence it will think okay, C is not aware, so it will send copy to C and it will acknowledge A and F. That was the point. Is it clear? So what is the point here? We need to maintain send flag. What it indicates to whom the copy is to be sent. We need to maintain acknowledgement flag to whom the acknowledgement is to be given. Okay. And refinement is what? That immediately we are not going to send the copy. We will wait for some time. Possibly from other interfaces, we will receive the same copy with the same source and same sequence number. And hence, we should uh, not forward for further to uh, the same interfaces again. Because already they have the information, so that flood will be them uh, easily and quickly. Are you clear with this? So from E, um, it should be sent to C only and not to A and F, assuming that C's copies is not yet it has been received. Is it clear? So this is for all other. Are you clear with this refinement? Are you clear with this refinement? Okay, that's great. Okay, and uh, see, but whenever we implement this, na, uh, what happens that when you are computing the shortest path, na, uh, at that time we are using the extra algorithm, and we have instead packets, and from that we are constructing the graph, and from the graph we are applying the extra algorithm to reach to the shortest path to the every router. Okay. But uh, it is possible that uh, when real time implementing uh, the D has not all the latest information. Some some of the older information that's linked, some of the link state packets are older, uh, or any any router in, might not have the full information about the network. Some older packets are there, so it is possible that some are having some have missed some dates. So it is possible that every router sees the network differently. So whenever we implement it real in the real time, no, many practical issues are coming up. The protocol that uses um, link is OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, OSPF, and IIS, Intermediate System, Intermediate System, IIS, IIS, Intermediate System, Intermediate System. This protocols are there. We actually make use of instead packet, instead routing. Okay, but when you are working with, uh, when you are, so what exactly happening? Every router is creating graph based on the instead packet that they have seen. But it is possible that some of the packets are different in all the routers. Some updates are not arrived yet. Some updates are missed. So possibly. Uh, Every router sees the network different, so that you have to maintain, uh, you have to keep your updates quick, and uh, um, still you have to damn the flood. So it is a different task to implement the real time. So this is the end of the linked uh, routing. Any doubt in this, you, have, you can ask me anything. Okay, now we continue with the implementation.
you please continue with your implementation or uh, compute the exit for the last data from the user and uh, perform a XOR for each character and generate a checksum and let me know what is a checksum. So maybe I think 15 minutes are sufficient for the task. After 15 minutes, we will again discuss the same.
So we take data from user up to that is completed. We have created a frame. Uh, yes, that yes, you can take character long. Yes, for now, let us keep it at character long. Okay, so is the checksum ready, user? Can you share your screen? So that others can see and can go over the next step. Is it showing your checksum or is it showing you the checksum? Okay, so can you share your screen? Hello, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so value of the checksum becomes 98 here, right? Yes. Okay, so but the length of the frame is five character long? No, uh, that uh, I have not mentioned the restriction. Okay, so it can be variable length in your yes. case. Okay, so now try to have a longer one, eight, uh, eight, eight long frame. And uh, so what, can you can you show that how you, can you explain that how you calculated it? Can you uh, discuss that? Yeah, I, I am getting the value of uh, ASCII, ASCII value of the character and then performing also. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so um. Fine. So what uh, is, he, is what he is doing? That he is going for the length of the string, right? And it, he is taking one by one character in ASCII, and he is performing the uh, bitwise checksum and calculating checksum and printing the checksum. And one has doubt up to this. Sir, can you please copy your code here in this checkbox? Those who are not comfortable can. Uh, uh, entire code, entire code, uh, not only the logic part. Those are not comfortable, they can take this one. Everyone, otherwise, are you comfortable what he has done? Anyone has out here? So that I can give you the next task. Anyone is having out here?
are you following see uh, okay fine so great okay, now what i need to do this is this is uh, sir, what is this this is transmitter receiver uh is transmitter side right this will be a transmitter side right this must be a transmitter side because we are calculating checksum here okay so what we will send on the receiver side what we will send of course the, the string that we have taken and now we have receiver function right frame plus checksum this frame plus checksum must be transmitted okay so now uh, now you will have a, you will have a receiver function okay whose input will be frame plus checksum Okay, now what to do? What is the next step? Once you receive M plus checksum, what to do? You have to verify the checksum. What are the steps? How will you verify the checksum? How will you verify the checksum? What is your idea, user? What you will do? I want to verify the checksum. What is your idea, cable and others, love and others? Uh, yes. same steps uh, and so all ASCII and compare but uh, Ronux uh, is correct here you are also correct here but how many characters you are going to uh, XOR one by one uh, including the checksum no so how will you identify it is a checksum or not if both are same if both checksum is same then Okay, okay, that is fine, but how will you identify that it, this is the check I should include it in XOR? Yes, compute the checksum from the frame and compute the transmitter checksum. Rolex is 8. Uh, because you know that 8 characters is the frame length, that's why you are going to compare. If first, you are going to compute the checksum of first 8 characters, and ninth character will be your checksum. In that way, it will be true. But the user has not defined the length of frame. So do we have another idea to do so? Agree. What we have to do from the uh, from the frame, we need to compute again the checksum and compare it with the transmitter's checksum. Okay. We need to compare it again with the transmitter's checksum. But the question is, uh, if it is fixed length frame, that is okay. The first eight characters are going to compute the checksum from. But if it is variable length, do we have any idea, Zuzar, how we are going to manage it? We can append the checksum at the end of the message. True. So what we can do, what they suggest here, that... Uh, uh, just XOR all the characters except the last one. In that way, you can. That is, your, you see, this is a protocol. This is the methodology that is. This is the understanding between transmitter and receiver only. So, what they have suggested, let us keep our checksum as the last byte, and uh, other bytes you can uh, take as your frame. I agree with any. So, Zuzer, you can go with this, or mm -hmm. you can fix your length uh, by eight. Or what you can do, that last byte will always be checksum. So, do not use that. All other bytes will be. Uh, will be your frame length uh, or what you can do is you can send the frame uh, size as well that is the third option that you have so is it okay. making sense okay so all, all, all of you try doing that and uh, recompute the checksum on the receiver side right and compare mm -hmm. it with this and what to do what you have to mention whether, whether the frame is correct or incorrect and uh, that you need to write here Right, so will it hardly take five seven minutes to complete? Right, so complete it. That checksum calculation is over. Then uh, other modification on the same problem we we'll need to do, but we will discuss them later. So complete it within five minutes so that we can discuss the next modification over the thing.
is it completed is it completed let me know your status so that i can decide the next task that's why i'm asking what is the status have you uh, completed the one or you are working on it you will need time then how much time it will be needed some status is required to be updated here come back listen first what is the status up to which point you have completed Have you completed the checksum on receiver side? Computation part is over. Okay, Nirav says it is done. Nirav, can you please share your screen? Mira, will it be possible to share the screen? Yes or no?
एम आई ऑडिबल नेटवर्क इश्यूज एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू ओके ग्रेट वॉट शुड आई अज्यूम हैव यू कंप्लीटेड दिस कैलकुलेशन ऑफ चेक सम ऑल ऑफ यू हैव यू कंप्लीटेड और डू यू नीड टाइम यू वॉन्ट टू कंटिन्यू इन द नेक्स्ट लेबोरेटरी Will you complete this, or you want to continue in the next laboratory? There are only two options. Now, huh? why you are stuck like this? Have you completed yes or no? Status, you need to update me, na? Huh? Have you completed yes or no? First, let me know. You have completed it, na? Great. So now, uh, anyone please share the screen so that we can conclude it that it is completed. Anyone who can share the screen, um, please share your screen. Who is sharing? Who is sharing the screen? Okay, let me know. Is your status like you have not completed yet, but you will complete it uh, by yourself? Is your status? उटिंग Ma'am, actually, I have currently printed that no M. Yeah, it's not printed. That is not a uh, not M, right? If you take some material, what receiver should do? Ah, uh, receiver should acknowledge the sender that I have not correctly got the frame. Ah, so from see, it can acknowledge, or we can have some other schemes as well. Ah, uh, that time onwards, that point onwards, we need to discuss in the next laboratory. What what to do next? It is not matching one. So right now, what we have implemented? Calculating the checksum and verification of checksum. Yeah. What if? What if it is not matching? That portion quickly. Of course, it is not a whole example. A whole laboratory will not be on that. Some portion of the laboratory we are going to discuss. That what if it doesn't match? What to do? Whether we should acknowledge or we should have another method. That is the point to be discussed in the next laboratory. So what 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 will be today's laboratory? The calculation and verification of checksum. Is everyone clear with this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's good. And uh, for now, we may leave in the next laboratory. We will keep this code with you. Will be helpful to you. and then we will discuss on the next steps of the same and then we will take a new experiment as well okay fine for now you may leave